as well. Okay. Hey, Carolee, how are you doing today? Okay. <laughs> awesome. I'm so glad we get to hang out here. We don't get to do that much, right? We're no. We're working. Um, tell folks a little bit how you, um, you know, came into the co-op movement and, you know, why co-ops for you? Well, I started in co-ops. My first co-op job was in 1973, which kind of dates me. I was working <laughs> for the Michigan Federation of Food Co-ops, which is the warehouse serving the buying clubs in the storefronts of Michigan. Wow. And the, one of the things that drew me to it was co-ops provided a place where women could do all kinds of non-traditional work. You know, we could go to the produce terminal and pick up loads. You know, we could drive trucks, we could unload trucks, we could run forklifts, we could run warehouses. And that was something that I would never have been able to do in some, you know, conventional business back then. And that was one of the things that attracted me to it. Plus, you know, the cooperative principles were deeply meaningful from the beginning. Mm. Okay, so those stood out. So then it sounds like from the beginning, there was sort of this, um, this lens that you had, you know, supportive of women. Um, talk about, you know, the work that you're doing with gender equity and how that began to shape. Yeah. Well, I started consulting in 1984. So this is my 40th anniversary year of consulting for co-ops. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and I call myself an HR consultant to boards and management. Okay. Because I've worked with both boards and management. With boards, it's on not just their relationship with their GM, they're the HR side of that, hiring, compensation, and so on, but also when employees come to the board with complaints mm -hmm. or something, you know. Yes. And one of the things that I do, along with other colleagues of mine in Columbia, is conduct employee surveys, which provides good data, you know, for, for boards and managers. Um, and I also have been working to support boards uh, that are hiring new general managers. But okay. other people on my team do this, too. I'm not the only one. Well, here we have these cooperative principles. And I think co-ops pride themselves on being really progressive organizations. So it was quite a shock to some boards and managers and even some fellow consultants to find out that actually women in the top position were being paid significantly less than men for the same you know level of sales volume and the same amount of time in the job and so on. But it actually wasn't a surprise to some of us female consultants because we've always been aware that you know patriarchy doesn't you know it's like white supremacy it's always around we have to we're all um affected by it and i one of the things i've learned from this project is i learned more about internalized sexism i've never understood it more until the last three years since i've been working on gender pay equity in myself and in female general managers and in female board members as well mm -hmm. And that's this idea that somehow women are not worthy of leadership positions, are not competent, not able to do that the way men are. And that's two things that aren't true. I mean, they're, so to be able to confront that, you have to be able to have the data to be able to say this is, in fact, an issue. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you, those bar graphs are pretty stark. And every time I showed them to somebody, they're like, oh, yeah, OK, <laughs> you know, I get it. What has been particularly interesting is to see what are the drivers of this inequity. Uh, some of it is that women don't negotiate for higher salaries. Some of that is because they don't do it because, not because they lack confidence, although that that is, for some people, that's true, but also because they know that actually that will have negative consequences for their relationship with the board. Mm -hmm. you know, they know that this is something that studies uh, women yeah. compensation show, you know, throughout society. It's not just co-ops. We're not immune to those forces. Patriarchy is as much a force in a co-op as, as it is anywhere else. But awareness changes things. And to their credit, some boards have really gotten serious about this. Boards with female general managers have said, well, we don't want to be part of the problem. We want to change this, but it does start the female general managers have to ask for more too, but when they can come with the data to see how underpaid I am compared to the median for managers in my, my size, size class of co-op, that, that can change the conversation. Mm -hmm. And would you say that it is changing the conversation? Well, looking at the data, it appears to be yes. Mm -hmm. Very yeah. good. Well, um, and so, you know, what does it mean to you to be able to do that? 
Well, it means that co-ops have a, a wider range of, of talent to draw and it means that general manager jobs are more desirable for women. It means that we can see more female leadership in our food co-op movement. And because after all, women were integral to starting this movement. And I got to see that back in the 70s when all these buying clubs would come to the warehouse to pick up their orders. They were all women, you know, that were doing this. They were often housewives, you know, women who are not working outside the home, which is why they were volunteering to get their buying club started. There was that labor to draw on. Mm -hmm. That's how they got started. And then a lot of the storefronts, the small, you know, the co-ops and retail locations, when they were small, I would say most of their managers were women back in the past. It was much more common. There, there were plenty of male managers too, but mm -hmm. the representation of women was higher than it is now. And there too, you know, a lot of women took on jobs with small struggling co-ops and tided them through some very hard times. Then those co-ops got more established, were able to pay more, and at that point, when those women left, often they were replaced with men who were paid much more than they mm -hmm. had been paid. And this was one of those things I just looked at. Yep, this is just a fact. This is what's happening. But after a while, you know, we begin to ask ourselves, well, can't we change that? And the only way we can change it is by raising awareness. So very good. Because there's no one working at a food co-op, no one on a co-op board that would say women should be paid less than that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So a little um, bit more about um, the history of the project together, and where you'd like to see it go from here. Okay. Well, in 2021, part of the gender equity project was a big update of the database. The database now asks many more questions. We're gathering much more data, whether people are internally or externally hired, which has an, a correlation with, with uh, compensation as well. Uh, the starting pay of employees in their organization. So now we're able to see pay ratios in co-ops. And then we've added uh, the other management positions besides general manager. So now there's more data available to co-ops to look at you know, what are marketing managers getting paid? What are finance managers getting paid? Of course, those co-ops have to also look to their local labor market. You can never ignore that. But it, it, here's another data point, which is very helpful. Mm -hmm. And also we have asked uh, general managers now how they identify by race. So we're going to be able to track racial equity now as well as gender equity. Very good. Well, where would you like, like to see things go in the future? Well, we need more managers participating in the database. Particularly, we need more male managers since they are better paid. They can help raise the they can help raise the the boats, you know, for everybody. They can yes. help raise the, their uh, female uh, peers as well by having that data. And uh, particularly for the larger co-ops, who could really benefit from having some of them and multi-store co-ops. I uh, would really like to see them participate more. And sometimes it's hard to reach them, get them to know, oh, this is this, this, this here's the database. You want to participate in this. Uh, one way is for the boards to see that they do, because sometimes with compensation proposals, boards want to see, well, what are other co-op managers getting paid as one of the data points in mm -hmm. a proposal? So that is one way that we can help to raise awareness is through boards. But we need um, it, it's free to NCG members. So I would really like to see more co-ops participating because the more data we have, the better. Yes, very good. I think I remember telling you um, when I was I was still a GM and um, back in the day, <laughs> and there was a moment where I heard the word. It was an email that came across my desk and I saw the words compensation, women and equity at the same time. And I'd never seen those three words together before. And it was an email from Carol Lee Coulter talking about the gender equity work that she was doing and we could come to a webinar or something like that. And so I'm just really excited to see that you're still at it. Thank you so much. <laughs> great, great, great work. The database is only open to general managers. That is, general managers enter their own data because it operates on the pollinator principle. You have to fly in with the pollen of your own data, your own compensation data, and leave it there before you can fly away with the data of other people's compensation. But So it's not open to boards or to interested bystanders, whatever, who want to find out what co-op GMs are getting paid. General managers themselves have to enter it. But 
then once they've entered their data, they can pull reports that they can give to their boards. Very good. Okay, well, Carolee, this has been amazing. What else do you want to share with folks before we um, let you go? Well, I would like to urge general managers to keep their data up to date because the, the database will only show users data from the last 12 months. So the data is always fresh. It's always current. But when you if uh, people don't update every year, then they their data falls out of the bars and graphs that, that users can't see it. Okay. Yeah. So it, it's not lost. It's still preserved in the database, but it's no longer visible to people who are visiting the database to general managers. So that's one thing I'd like to ask people to do is join it and then update every year. How can folks reach you, find you? Well, through the Columinate website. There's okay. a, you know, that's probably the easiest way by email.